I wanted to show a quick and easy way to create kaleidoscope type patterns in Photoshop. And in this particular instance, I just use a square shaped image with triangles. Um, you can do hexagons, octagons, whatever you want to do. Like I said, I just use triangles. So the first thing you need to do is create a square document, whatever size you want. Um, I always keep it 300 DPI because I'd rather be able to resize down as opposed to trying to resize up and lose resolution, which is no good. In any event, I created my square document. I created some I created some smart guides so that I could find dead center, and I used my pen tool to create a triangle. And then I could turn my guides off. Once I created the triangle, I converted it to a smart object by right clicking on the layer and choosing convert to smart object. And then the next thing I did is I duplicated and flipped that triangle as needed to go all the way around the image until I ended up with a complete square. The next thing I did was to take all of those duplicate copies and put them together in a group. And then I locked the group because the beauty of this particular method is that you don't need to touch any of the items in the group. You just need to edit the original. So to do that, I'm going to double click on the thumbnail not on the text because that will just edit the text and not on the layer itself because that brings up the layer style box but double click on the thumbnail itself to open the smart object now you can certainly work like this by using control tab to jump back and forth between your open documents but I like to see them both at the same time and if you don't have a keyboard shortcut set up like I do just go to window arrange and two up vertical and now you can see your documents side by side the only thing you'll need to do is just pay attention as to which document is, act, is active because that can hang people up. And you'll know you're in which document is active because the text will be bolder than the one that's not. And what we want to do is be in the smart object file. And in that smart object file, I have the original layer and it's locked because we don't need to touch it. And now I'm going to go into bridge and grab some an image to bring in to use. I'll, well, heck, why not? I'll just go ahead and grab this flower image. And the quick, there's 10 ways to bring something into Photoshop, but I like quick and easy. So I'm just going to click and drag into Photoshop. Now, you may or may not have this step depending on how you set up your Photoshop. I like all my images to come in as smart objects, and as such, they go through Camera Raw. If you have it set up this way, just hit OK. And if you don't, you'll come in at this point. And now at this point, I know my image the flower image I'm bringing in is larger than my smart object, so I'm not worried about resizing it. And you can resize it. You can transform and rotate and do whatever you want to do with it. Once you're happy, go ahead and hit enter. Now the next thing you need to do is create a clipping mask. And to do that, you can either right click on the image layer and select create clipping mask. Let me undo that. You can hold down the alt key Put your cursor between the two layers till you get the downward arrow in the box and clip. You could go up to the layer menu too, but I like sticking with keyboard shortcuts. Once you've done that, all you need to do now while still in the smart object file is hit Control S to save. And you can see your original image has updated. If I click back into that file, the, you'll now see that what was originally a black triangle is filled in with the image. And if I open the group, they're also filled in with the image. Let me change this. Make it a little bigger in case people want to see it. So now the image is in there. The cool thing is, going back to the smart object, actually clicking on the layer, I can move the image around. Hit save again. And get a completely different pattern. And you're probably seeing really quickly that you could spend hours and hours doing this. And the great thing is that if you want to, you can apply all sorts of adjustment layers or filters to it. So for example, you could go to filter, texture, stained glass is a good one. And just for the sake of argument, you could, uh, if you were doing a coloring page, you might want to make these cells bigger for people or smaller. You can adjust your border. Adjust it however you want. Hit OK. Hit Save again. And your image updates. The cool thing is, because you used a smart filter, 
It's non-destructive, meaning you can go back in and double click on the filter at any time to edit. You can change your settings, hit OK, and go again. You can also, if you're not creating coloring pages, you can double click to edit the filter blending options because you're just editing the filter and not the image itself. You can change it to whatever you want in the opacity, which also produces a pretty cool effect. Let me just hit OK and see what that looks like. That's not really doing a lot for me, so I'm going to take that off. And now I'm going to go back into Bridge. I'll grab another image real quick and see how this looks. So I'll grab these pine cones and again just click and drag. Hit OK, Tanner. Create a clipping mask again. I can either hold down, like I said before, hold down the Alt key and click. Since it's on top, let me get that out of the way. I can drag it down between the two and it'll automatically clip and just turn off the other one. Hit S to save. I can go back to that image and flip it, save it again. Completely different pattern. If I wanted to quickly apply that filter to this layer, I can do it a couple different ways. If I want to actually just move it from one layer to the other, I'd click and drag on the filter and it brings it down to that layer. So you can see how that looks. If I wanted to keep it on that one, instead of just clicking and dragging, I'd hold down the Alt key and then click and drag. And what that would do, what that does, excuse me, is make a copy so it's still on the other layer, should I want it. You can do it either way. You'll also find out that you don't have to make big radical adjustments either. You can take this particular image and you can move it just a little bit and hit Control Save again and you get a completely different design. If you wanted to make this black and white, one quick and easy way to do that would be to apply a black and white adjustment layer. And then since I know this is mostly magentas and blues, I'm going to adjust my sliders accordingly and take out the color. I could keep going, but this just gives you an idea. Of course, if you take out too much, it might be hard to see the pattern, but it's definitely something to play with, and hopefully that helps people.